a solid uniform sphere with mass m, radius r, and a rotational inertia about an axis that goes through its center of mass, two fifths m r squared. It rolls without slipping up this incline. Find the sphere's acceleration, angular acceleration, and the friction acting on the sphere. By the way, since all the forces on the sphere are the same, whether the sphere is rolling without slipping up or down the incline. All these will be exactly the same if I change the scenario to down the incline instead of up. We're looking for acceleration and the force, so we should draw the force diagram and then write the force and torque equation. If the sphere is rolling up the incline, it's going to slow down. If it's rolling down the incline, it would speed up. So the acceleration either way is uh, down the incline, and the angular acceleration is uh, clockwise. Since the acceleration goes along the incline, for problem solving purpose, we only need to draw the forces along the incline. For the force equation part, we can just draw the forces from one dot. Instead of drawing the mg going straight down, I'm going to draw the mg's component down the incline, which is the mg sine theta. Since the sphere has a tendency to slide down the incline, so the st static friction goes up the incline. And that will be it for the forces along the incline. And which force gives us the torque? It would be the friction, because the friction acts at the contact point. If you would like to, you can draw the other two forces over here as well, the mg at the center of mass, the normal force perpendicular to the contact surface and the x on the contact point. These two, they both go through the axis, so they do not provide any torque. Since the same object, the sphere, does both translational motion and rotational motion, we would write net force equals to ma and net torque equals to I alpha for the same object. For the net force equals to ma, since the acceleration goes down, the downward force must be bigger, so the net force is the bigger side, mg sine theta minus the smaller side equals to ma. The net torque equals to I alpha. The torque is produced by the friction. And the torque is lever arm times the force. And what is the lever arm for friction? It's the distance between the line of force and the axis. It is the radius of the sphere, r. And this equals to I alpha. The I is 2 fifths mr squared. And uh, what is alpha? Since it's rolling without slipping, alpha and A are related. A is uh, R times alpha, so we can replace alpha with uh, A over R, the same R. In this case, uh, the R's happen to cancel, and this R cancels with that one. So we're left with the friction equals to 2 fifths M times A. And I can put it over here and stack them and add them. Actually, this is the same mass for the sphere, so I should have made them the same m. When I add them, this minus friction and friction, they would uh, cancel, kind of like what we usually do to tension. So I get mg sine theta equals to m plus 2 fifths m times a. Therefore, the acceleration would equal to the m's cancel, and then on this side I have 1 plus 2 fifths, which gives me 7 fifths. So this is going to be 5 sevenths g sine theta. And what is alpha? Alpha is a over r. So it's going to be 5 g sine theta over 7 r. To find the friction, we just have to plug the a into here. So friction would equal to 2 fifths times uh, m times uh, 5 sevenths g sine theta. The 5 and the 1 fifth cancel, so I'm going to get 2 sevenths uh, mg sine theta.
Notice how in this equation, it almost looks like mg sine theta is the net force that acts on this m and a two-fifth m. The two-fifth m comes from this part of the rotational inertia. If I change the rolling object from a solid sphere to a hoop, then the ICM would equal to mr squared instead of two-fifths mr squared, which means when I put mr squared over here without the two-fifths, this part would be m, this part would be m, which means that I would end up with a, a the acceleration that is less than this. It's going to become one-half g sine theta instead of five-sevenths. The rotational inertia depends on how far away the mass distribution is from the rotational axis. For a hoop, all the mass is concentrated on the rim, so it has a larger rotational inertia than that of a sphere. For something with a larger rotational inertia, the net torque equals to I alpha. This is bigger. That means uh, it would require a larger friction to provide a torque to accelerate it angularly. If the friction is bigger, that means uh, the net force, the downward net force is smaller, so the acceleration will be smaller. Another thing is, uh, notice how the radius canceled and uh, for the acceleration part, the mass also canceled. So the acceleration of the sphere has nothing to do with the mass and the radius of the sphere. But it does have to do with this two-fifths right here. So if I have two solid uniform spheres with different mass, different radius, but because they have exactly the same kind of mass distribution, so this two-fifths part is exactly the same, that means that they would roll without slipping along the same incline at the same acceleration although different r would provide a different angular acceleration. So if an object is rolling without slipping up or down the incline, the acceleration has to do with, the, of course, the angle of the incline and the shape, the kind of mass distribution we have for the object, because it has to do with this number here. If it's a different shape or different kinds of mass distribution, it will have a different number here. Another thing is that because the friction end up not being zero at all, that means in order for the sphere to be able to roll without slipping either up or down the incline, the surface has to be rough enough. So the mu s has to be at least large enough to be able to supply a static friction that is this much. What if mu s is too small? If the surface is too slippery, then the object is going to have to roll with slipping. And if there's no friction at all, only mg and normal force, that means uh, there would not be any torque acting on the object. That means uh, there would not be any alpha. Suppose this incline is uh, slippery, no friction, and we still want the sphere to be able to roll up and down the incline without slipping, what we can do is we can wrap a string around the sphere so that the string does not slip and then hold the string over here. And then you can make this object roll up and down without slipping. In that case, instead of friction over here, we would have tension. The tension will be the one to provide torque. So we can put T here and then we'll find the tension to be CM right there.